This is the Romat Link Dolphin. It's a folding e-bike that claims to go 25 miles an hour and up to 100 miles on the charge. Today we're going to measure its speed, acceleration, braking, range, and more. Then we'll put the results into our score sheet, calculate the values, and find out where it lands on our tool list. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm Rob. Welcome back to The Tool List, where we test without the bias intervention of humans and score tools using a custom algorithm that gets more accurate the more we test. Now today, we're continuing our e-bike series with this. This is the Romat Link Dolphin. It's a folding full suspension fat tire bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor, a huge 48 volt 30 amp hour battery, which they say will get you up to 100 miles on a charge. It has a 350 pound payload capacity, a unique rear seat for your friends, and you can get your own for around $1,299 today, which as our testing shows, is quite a steal. Always check the website for the latest price. Now, before we get into our performance testing, we're gonna highlight its features, all of which are calculated into the final score, starting with the brakes. The Dolphin has mechanical disc brakes. Now, we would prefer they had hydraulic, which is most often more powerful, longer lasting, and requires less maintenance, but it still stops. Next, we look at the size of the disc brakes. On a heavy e-bike, we wanna see at least 180 millimeters, but the Dolphin only has a 160 millimeter disc. Moving on to safety and starting with the headlight. We offer points for including a headlight, but even more if the light is bright enough for us to actually ride at 20 miles an hour in the complete dark. The Dolphin's light will definitely help you be seen and was easily bright enough for us to ride at night. The tail light's important too. It's pretty normal to find a light on the back of an e-bike like this, but there are bonus points to be had if it also acts as a brake light. The Dolphin's tail light is bright, but doesn't respond to the brakes. Next up is suspension. The Dolphin is actually a full suspension bike, which means it has suspension forks up front and additional shocks in the rear. While this does a great job of softening the ride, we do wish it had adjustable shocks up front. For its throttle, the Dolphin has a very comfortable twist grip. As we explained in our first e-bike test, there are two very different kinds of pedal assist. There's a cadence sensor, which is triggered by pedaling, but runs on its own, or a torque sensor that measures the amount of force you put into your pedaling and automatically applies a bit of help. Now the Dolphin has a cadence sensor, which is just more cumbersome to use than a torque sensor, but with all of this power and such a huge battery, you may not be pedaling too much anyways. Speaking of the battery, the Dolphin comes with an absolutely massive 1440 watt hour battery, which has it tied for first place on our list. But like the Gemini X, which makes 1440 watt hours with two batteries, the Dolphin does it with only one. And the range results are predictably good, but we'll get to those in a moment. The Romat League Dolphin comes with a three amp charger, which was tied for third among the bikes that we've tested so far. Based on its battery size, you're looking at about a 10.5 hour charge time from zero to 100. Now these bikes are heavy, not just because of the batteries, motor and electronics, but because the frame has to be strong enough to support all that as well, which makes the frame heavier too. And the Dolphin is a folding bike, which means it needs a structure to support that as well. So we assumed this would be the heaviest bike we tested, and we were right. The Dolphin weighed in at 94.9 pounds, landing at last on our list. And while a heavy bike isn't a good thing, we can't ignore the reason why. First, it has a huge battery, which is a big bonus. Plus, this thing can fold in half. That's extremely valuable to people who want to move the bike often without a bike rack. While the Dolphin gets extra points for this valuable feature, keep in mind that even when it's folded up, it still weighs almost 100 pounds. We found it quite challenging just to lift it into the back of a car. Now for our audience, we know storage is important. If you're going to use this bike to replace your car or truck on a nice day, you'll need places to safely store your stuff. The Dolphin doesn't include either a front or rear rack, but they do offer them for about $99 each. The Dolphin has a seven-speed Shimano gear shifter and derailleur. As it turns out all six of the bikes that we had tested have the same number of speeds, which left us quite a bit disappointed. When you're really pushing these guys at speeds over 20 miles an hour, even seventh speed will leave you pedaling at a ridiculous pace. A higher gear would go an awfully long way. Next, we have height range. We bottom out and then extend the seat to the maximum recommended height and measure the difference. The Dolphin can be adjusted from 33 to 40.5 inches, a range of 7.5 inches in total, which puts it in fifth place. Now we don't have a good way to test cargo capacity without purposefully destroying the bikes. During our endurance and acceleration testing, which you'll see in a minute, we put around 480 pounds of weight across the bike in our test trailer and all six bikes manage that just fine. So we're going to trust the manufacturer's numbers on this one. The cargo capacity of the Dolphin is rated at 350 pounds, which puts it in last place. 
Now as for class, the Dolphin is closest to a class three with a twist throttle, which means it'll ride on throttle alone up to 20 miles an hour and up to 28 miles an hour with pedal assist, except the Dolphin's only rated for 25. On to the performance testing. Now first up, let's look at acceleration. For this test, we wanted to use the throttle only to get from zero to 15 miles an hour as fast as we could. First, I got on the bike along with a heavy duty trailer with a few hundred pounds of weights, bringing the total to 480 pounds. Then for the other end, we've got her. Some say she wears motorcycle gear to go biking and lists her bikes as dependents on her taxes. All we know is she's called the twig and at only 120 pounds, she's likely going to get moving faster and go farther on a charge. Let's start the test. Now with the Dolphin loaded to full weight, it took 15.05 seconds to get to 15 miles an hour, making it the slowest accelerating bike in our test. Next, the Twig took a turn and was able to hit 15 miles an hour in only 4.7 seconds, placing it in fifth just ahead of the Hemingway Zebra. Moving on to top speed, to get this number, we turned them all on to their highest assist and I pedaled as hard as I could on a very flat road. I was able to get the Dolphin up to 24 miles an hour, which is just a notch below promised. Now once you're going that fast, you're gonna wanna stop fast too. To test the brakes, I sped each bike up to 15 miles an hour and then applied both brakes as hard as I could. The Dolphin was able to come to a stop in 13 feet, which gave it fourth place. And finally, let's talk about range. Romat Link says you should be able to get up to 100 miles on pedal assist mode. Now, since we can't reliably pedal for a test, we set each bike to 20 miles an hour and ran the full bike out at 20 miles an hour on throttle alone. Each bike ran our three mile test course that simulates a typical city commute with lots of speed adjustments and turns. I would ride it first with my 480 pound setup and run the battery down until the bike quit. Then we would completely recharge it and let the twig take a shot. With a full battery and a heavy load, I was able to get 30.74 miles, giving it second place. And the twig was able to get a staggering 65.49 miles, which is the longest of any of the bikes we tested. All thanks to that very large battery and a very high efficiency rating. Now to determine the efficiency, we took the twig's range numbers and calculated how many watt hours it was burning through per mile, and it came out to only 21.99 watts per mile, the best of any bike we tested. And finally, let's talk value. To assign a value score, we took the current price of each bike and then tallied up all the bike's other points and then divided those points by the dollar amount. Now while our resulting number is arbitrary to you, it allows us to generate a rank that you can understand. In this case, the Romat Link Dolphin earned a value score of 7.76, which easily put it in first place. This bike delivers on a lot of features, reasonable performance, and a stellar range, all for only $12.99. I have no idea how they're doing that, but the results are a bike that we all really enjoyed riding. Even my 12-year-old daughter was able to ride this bike without any problems. Now, I wanna remind you, though, that all of these e-bike companies regularly put these bikes on sale. The change in price can drastically change the value of these bikes and their position on our list. So if a bike checks off most of your boxes and it suddenly goes on sale, it might just be your best purchase. Now we're done examining the features and testing the performance. When we add up all these scores, we get a final score that ranges between one and 10. If you'd like to learn more about our adaptive scoring system, check out our first e-bike review where we go more in depth. Now with everything calculated, the Dolphin gets an 8.3, which puts it in second place overall. Now, as I just mentioned, the Dolphin hit most of the marks that we looked for. While its folding trick is interesting, it was still very cumbersome and heavy to move around. But the passenger design and the cool passenger seat in the back made it a popular choice among us here during our testing. There's an optional $30 rear seat handle that I'm going to pick up just so it's easier for people to hop on the back. And that range, well, you just can't beat it, especially at this price range. Now this is the last e-bike test that we're doing here on the tool list. We actually use this testing to test our testing process, and now we're ready to move on to power tools starting with drill drivers. If you enjoyed this kind of testing, we hope you subscribe and keep an eye out for those future episodes. Now full disclosure, while all of our testing's unbiased, we feel obligated to let you know that the bike was provided to us for free from Romat Link specifically for this testing, and with the understanding that we don't control the test nor the scores. Consequently, the participating brands had no say over our scoring or content. 
That's it for this one. If you'd like to learn more about the Romatling Dolphin, we'll link to their website in the description. Now I'll see you next time.